All right, before we get into NWSL games, we just want to extend quick congratulations to Olympic Lyon. They are the 2022 WICC winners. Lyon defeat Monterrey 4-0 in the WICC final. Lindsay Horan, capping off an emotional return of Portland, was named player of the tournament, scored three goals, including two in the final alone. It was almost like it was written in the stars, right? So congrats to Leon on winning the WICC once more. It, it was kind of like a home game for Lindsay Horan. Let's right. be real. It was nice to see that. It you was know, great. They, they made the announcement, you know, over the, the course of the offseason that she was going to head on over to, to Leon and, and go on contract for a couple of years. And, you know, honestly, because of that, they kind of reshifted things with her Portland uh, contract. So she'll totally. eventually get to make, eventually get to make her return. Right. And go ahead and, and continue playing with, um, with the thorns when she wants to make her return to the States. But this was kind of nice in the sense where it's like, you get that sort of kind of not, not just a check-in, but a little bit of, of a, you know, farewell. You don't necessarily get that sometimes in the off season when you kind of make those choices for yourself as a player to move on into uh, to the next chapter of your career. But so it was nice to really sort of um, see this uh, duo of games from her in Providence park, a place that she's not unfamiliar with at all. And we're going to preview a game in <laughs> with, with Portland in this next section of the episode. But first we want to recap really quickly, San Diego wave in Houston dash. This was a game that kicked off late night. It was NWSL after dark action for everyone. We were unable to recap it because we wanted to recap the uh, NWSL matches that had taken place to date up until that week. And also get a chance to go live to talk about the women's cup. Congratulations to oil rain on lifting that and against racing Louisville. But in this one, Lisa, if memory serves me correct in our preview, I believe I had this one picked as a draw. And I think you might have gone with Houston, right? We're going with the hot hand. In yes. This one. Yes. Going with the hot hand. And and honestly, the way this game unfolded, I thought I was going to be right. And then I thought you were going to be right just a few seconds yes. later. It felt like um, this was a very exciting late night NWSL game that um, I'm excited to talk about i know after we did our saturday night recap we got a lot of questions on twitter um and, and on our lives being like hey what about the san diego houston game hey we're talking about it right now don't worry we were never gonna let this one <laughs> go by the wayside it ends three to one san diego wave winning so both of us wrong in our predictions you <laughs> with the draw me with houston winning this one but um uh, we got to run through how this game unfolded because seven mm. minute in quick Houston gets on the board and everyone gets one guess who scored. Yeah, you're right. It's Ebony Salmon. This player is just on fire right now. This goal is fantastic. San Diego can't clear it after Houston's applying so much pressure. And Salmon, she doesn't even have space to take a shot. She creates the space for herself around four defenders. If you watch this, these highlights, go back and look at them. Then she rips an incredible shot, gets on the board first in the seventh minute. Uh, but Alex Morgan, she is not to be upstaged by the young international in Ebony Salmon. 13th minute, Alex Morgan, she gets on the board and equalizes for San Diego. And that was, I, I think that's a good way to set the stage for oh this my goodness. Game, how it unfolded because it was very exciting quick start it was like so i was like oh no like sort of watching it i remember you and i were like oh no like this game is gonna is it gonna end like in madness of course as we're going live to try to talk a little bit about the women's cup right and it was we were in for a treat because i remember us you know getting off finishing that and then being able to watch the rest of this game where quite frankly I was most excited about because we got to see Amira Ali extend the lead. She got the go ahead goal for San Diego wave in this one. Nice assist by Mackenzie Downey. A good game for her. Saw her with a pair of assists in this one, this first one for Amira Ali. And you just saw a little bit like it just enough to kind of create some chaos there for this uh, Houston dash side. And that, that was a little bit, I think of the new, uh, a bit of a new challenge. I think that we saw for this dash side, they've been on an incredible run during this second half of the season. Obviously Ebony Salmon is the story for them coming out of this, but watching some of these defensive breakdowns for this dash side, I think maybe is the game that they're going to go back and look at and try to tighten some things up and say, okay, here's some areas in which we, weren't able to execute as well as we wanted to, especially when you're talking about this late game goal 
from Sophia Jakobsen. That is not something that you want to concede so late in the game. Granted, at this point, you're already down 2-1. Now you're ending this game down 3-1 because of this light, late goal by Jakobsen. So I, I got I to gotta say, if you're on the, the dash side of things, I think there are areas here where you're looking at some of these goals, even with that Alex Morgan goal. Yeah. Huge. specifically you see these you see three dash players this is like this very very good combo between the positioning of of amir ali and taylor corniak and sophia smith and you see ali make this run into the center of the body you see, you see dash players collapsing like three players collapsing on taylor corniak who has an option to her left or right at this point for either morgan or ali and morgan ends up receiving the ball and is able to slot it away. And you sort of see this similar energy, this similar defend, like defensive yeah. errors kind of happening for, for the dash throughout some of these, um, throughout some of these goals. And I think maybe perhaps a little bit in this one, some of the midweek, you know, action perhaps caught up to the dash in this game on the road against San Diego. I think that's a good way to put it. Remember Houston did play midweek. They, they had a very quick turnaround and, and they're a team that's coming off of um, a very hectic stretch that they played where yes, they were winning games, but they were also playing consistently. And we saw them winning games two one, four two, four one, and now to be um, on the other side of that and losing three to one to this San Diego side, um, maybe a bit of a reset. But like in terms of the standings in, in this one, um, San Diego is still second, Houston's still third, and in the Golden Boot race, Alex Morgan is first with twelve goals, Smith yep. with eleven, Ordonez with ten, and then there's Ebony Salmon with eight goals on the year and in, in just how many games that she's played with this Houston <laughs> side. It's truly fantastic. But I think the breakdowns for Houston came on the defensive side, which is something that this dash side really struggled with at the beginning of the year. And, and more recently they've picked it up, but frankly, they're, they're still conceding goals that they played in right against Gotham. They conceded one against all rain. They conceded one against Gotham. They conceded two. So they've always been conceding goals, but it's the fact that their production on the offensive side, side of it has been successful but we just saw um this san diego side come back to their form that we saw them in early in this season when when you look at some of the players that casey stoney has lined up um even someone like with carly telford and goal who who has done fantastic stepping into that role in, in place of kaylin sheridan um who should be back this weekend but really a fantastic job by telford that's such a seamless transition from this um and i, I want to give a shout out to mackenzie doniak a player that subbed in on this game to 50th minute or so she created the most chances for the San Diego side. She ends up getting an assist on the Amir Ali goal uh, and on the Jock on the Jakobsen goal. So that's a player that's done really well for San Diego and Casey Stoney. Houston Dash rising and falling in the same week. What a season we're witnessing in this one, bumping up to second place and then closing out in third place after the loss to San Diego. We've got a midweek match taking place this week. It's going to be kicking off tomorrow on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. North Carolina Courage hosting this one. They're going to be welcoming the Portland Thorns. Who do you got in this one, Lisa? So this match is is a really a big one. We saw these two sides play uh, just a few weeks ago in early August to a three three draw, and and Portland is red hot right now with what they've been able to do, um, just picking up points week in and week out. And North Carolina coming off of their first win in a very long time of that streak. Um, th this is going to be a great game, and I'm really excited for it. I don't think it's going to be another draw that we just saw from these two sides. Um, I, I, I want to say Portland's going to win, but there's something in me that wants to lean towards North Carolina. So I'm going with my gut and I'm going to say North Carolina, even if all the signs point to Portland with the streak that they've been able to go on the form that players like Sophia Smith is in, but there's just something about this North Carolina side with, with players like Diana Ordonez, Carolina and Dabinia in the midfield alongside Denise O'Sullivan that are just dominant. It, it's, it's a midfield battle between Portland and North Carolina. And if North Carolina wins that they will win this game. So I'm going to stick with the courage in this one. We'll All right. I, I listen, I think it's it's uh it's fun to go with it. I think when you're looking at their top line, when you're looking at players like the Binya and Caroline and and the season that Diana Ordonez is putting together, 
they're playing some ex exciting attacking offensive soccer, right? And I don't know if we are going to get that six goal draw that they got earlier, like you said. But looking at Portland and the window of, of time that they came off of, they had they just participated in the WICC. I think they're going to be taking the uh, the win in this one. I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to go with Portland in this one. I think it's a different opposition that this Courage side is going up against. I think, you know, the win that they got against Chicago is good for their confidence, uh, you know, in terms of the games that the Courage have remaining in front of them and the potential to maybe, you know, go on a little bit of a run, definitely play spoiler against some other teams. But you're talking about going against a, you know, a, a really depleted, uh, struggling kind of Chicago Red Stars team right now that kind mm -hmm. of doesn't really have the personnel to, to sort of keep up, it looks like, with the remainder of this regular season. And you're going to be going up against the number one team in the league right now. It's a little bit of difference in oppositions here. So while uh, oh, I totally. do imagine that this trio of Davinia and Caroline and Ordonez will make things difficult, I have to imagine that the defensive side of things for Portland are going to be a little bit more secure and a little bit more locked up compared to that Chicago Red Stars team. And I think that is going to be the difference in this game. And I do imagine Sophia Smith wants to get back to scoring in NWSL match. So I got her with a goal in this one, too. So I'm going to go for Portland in this one with uh, Sophia Smith making it a difficult night for that uh, Courage back line.